pretty significant income advantage. Yeah, you can see there, it's got a few hundred uh, minerals per minute on the income advantage, and he actually is ahead a little bit on the gas as well. Um, and that is the result of this nine harvester discrepancy between the two players. Um, but meanwhile, there is a lot of zealots moving out here. We've got about 10 zealots moving across the map, and you can see that the charge upgrade has finished. So that will give him a very quick surround, uh, not only on the hydras, but also on these spine crawlers. Uh, the key to taking those down quickly with these zealots is getting a good surround on it, and that is exactly what that charge ability allows you to do. So we'll see if he's able to break this front entrance with these zealots. No, he's going to back off because there is two spine crawlers and all those hydralists there. I'm not sure exactly why he's backing off because those zealots are very strong against the um, against these uh, hydralists. So especially with that uh, charge upgrade, they would actually be in pretty good shape, I got to think, because he is outnumbers the hydralists, and then there's only two spine crawlers. So, um, but apparently he is going to wait outside of the base right now, and the Zerg player um, is actually producing eight more hydralists. So the window of opportunity for this attack is going to dwindle away here pretty quickly. Although five more zealots coming into play for the Protoss player, so he is once again sticking with this straight zealot uh, strategy, and more zealots continuing to warp in. Um, he would actually be pretty well advised to get a some kind of a proxy pylon up here, so he can just warp them in rather than having to run them all the way across the map um, but apparently deciding that is not what he wants to do and at this point we do see a decent amount of hydralis on the map built up at the entrance for the zerg player right now he has a total of 14 hydralisks here um, and i'm not sure if he's got any more in his base no it looks like that 14 is all of his hydralisks but he does not have any roaches or zerglings to back this army up he is strictly using hydralisks so we'll see if this strategy pays off for him against these zealots and the zealots are actually going to move around no they're not going to try to take out the destructible rocks i thought he was going to go for those destructible rocks but apparently seeing that this overlord is spewing creep right at this entrance he is not going to try to get up there because the hydralis uh the, or the zerg army rather will be aware of it and it looks like he is going to try to get up a proxy pylon here and these elves just blasting through those zerglings it looks like they're going to try to move up and take on the hydra or you can just see how strong these zealots are against the hydralis with that charge ability they can get a super quick surround on the hydralis line there and able to force those hydralis to retreat all of these hydralis have taken some damage and are at half half health or less for most of them um, so he actually should move in here relatively quickly, I would think, because once again, he does have the unit advantage, but he is not going to press that advantage for some reason and uh, continuing to uh, warp in units at his base and run them over, it looks like, uh, despite the fact that he does have a proxy pylon out here and he can just warp in units right on this. And there he is. Okay, so he is going to start using that. Actually warping in some sentries here now too as well. So we may see some force fields or uh, possibly even some guardian shields here from him shortly to reduce the attack, that, uh, the amount of damage that those hydralists do with that ranged attack. Um, but the Zerg player has moved out beyond the protection of his spine crawler so he may be trying to engage this protoss army here very shortly uh and both players here starting to uh macro up a decent sized army as we do see more zealots being warped in here so uh this very very heavy zealot army is going to be a pretty good counter for the uh mass hydras that we see from the zerg player right now a few zerglings in the back but it looks like they are not going to be on the front lines doing any damage so, uh, but we do see the Zelts moving in here. They're going to back off again. Guardian Shield going up to help defend against those uh, Hydralis and uh, the Zerg player putting, or I'm sorry, the Protoss player rather, putting down some force fields for some reason. I'm not sure exactly why he did that because I think that hurt him more than helped him because obviously that did not allow him, that blocked him from getting to the Hydralis and he could not get us around on those Hydralis and a lot of Bailings coming out. These Banelings will absolutely tear up Zealots. So um, that is going to be bad news bears for the Proton player when he tries to move in there. And putting up a Photon Cannon by this, and you can see those Banelings just absolutely tearing apart those Zealots. Um, and it looks like they're going to take down the Crocs and Pylon and uh, Photon Cannon as well. So the Zerg player losing his position on the map, and he may be in some serious trouble here uh, because he does not have a whole, uh, well, really any units on the map right now. Um, basically just a, a phase prism, so he may be trying to, yeah, he is going to try to transport some units, um, but with the large army that the Zerg player has on the map and the economic advantage of having this expansion up and running, um, the Protoss player really needs to respond by doing some serious damage or by getting an expansion of his own and defending that against the uh, eminent attack of the Zerg player because they are, of course, massing up a decent-sized army. We see a lot of Zerglings, a lot of Banelings, and a lot of Hydralis, so the uh, Zerg player is starting to mass up a pretty formidable force here, um, so we will probably see him roll over the Protoss player unless he is able to respond with something significantly quick here. Um, 
But going back to his base here, uh, we do see that he is starting to get more and more drones on this expansion here, getting both of the geysers going. So once he gets that base fully saturated, he will be at a very, very big economic advantage. Although, as you can see right now, the reserve player has a lot of excess minerals right now, um, not really, really utilizing them. I'm not sure if he's uh, trying to get more gas so that he can get some higher tier units, but um, at this point, just getting massive Zerglings with this speed upgrade would actually be probably enough to deal with what the Protoss player has because he only has a few stalkers in his base right now um, and up until now he's been going mass mass uh, zealots which of course if you get enough zerglings you can take on zealots it's just not as cost effective as some of the other units that are available to the zerg um, but of course there are no zealots on the map right now I'm sorry there are four zealots on the map they're just not in his base currently uh, looks like he's trying to do some harassment with them which uh, that did not last very long as you can see already those zealots are dead and those hydralists were able to come up and clean up that face prism and the zealots that were on the attack and uh, most of the drones here being safe for the zerg player so he is going to continue to mine here although he probably has a dip in his economic yeah his income here you can see went down slightly because he did have to pull his drones off the line here to keep them safe um, he does not have a second base going up yet but um, the, the protoss player still has not expanded so uh, at this point the zerg player should be in pretty good shape provided that he does not do something to completely blow the advantage that he has right now. Um, but looking at the Protoss player's base, he is getting another face prism here, and he is researching the blink technology for his stalkers, which um, can be very useful against the ranged units, but the problem with uh, blink is that if you're facing against a bunch of speedlings and, and uh, banelings like you have here, that, that blink will only get you so far because those units are so fast. When you blink, that buys you like a split second but with how quick those units are, they can get caught up to your stalkers before that blink timer renews, um, which basically means that um, you're only buying yourself a, a very small amount of time. Um, and after at that, at which point in time you're going to lose a lot of your units to these banelings and zerglings. But um, we'll see how this plays out. It looks like the zerg player is going to move out across the map now. Um, so we could see a battle here very, very shortly. A decent amount of stalkers and sentries starting to build up here, but I don't know if this is going to be enough to defend against all these banelings. Um, and what looks like the Zerg player is going to move up here with these banelings, going straight for all these buildings. And oh, the pylon goes down in one of the gateways, two of the gateways, three of the gateways. Only one gateway left and isn't being powered over here, but it is very low on HP. Um, if the Zerg player focuses that down, there will be no production capability. Yeah, and that goes down right now. So. The, as of this moment, there is absolutely no way for the uh, Protoss player to get more units on the field other than uh, the abilities that he has from his robotics facility. And uh, it looks like this game is going to be over. Going to the Zerg player, Crazy Jeff. Uh, Crazy Jeff able to take out the whole production capability with those Banelings and Zerglings that he had at the front of his base. Um, and for whatever reason, Handlebar has not yet GG'd. Um, and he said, I suck at Toss. Ha ha. So uh, maybe indeed he is playing random. I guess we'll have to double check that before we start game two to see if that is indeed what's going on. Um, but he was just not able to keep up with the uh, with the macro of the Zerg player, Crazy Jeff. So Crazy Jeff getting game one. So uh, we'll see if if uh, Handlebar is able to rally and get a win here in game two. Uh, we're gonna move on to game two right now. GG.